it's Megan, and welcome to the Learn to Monetize More video series. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to use click tracking in DFP. Click tracking is one of the best ways to monitor how site visitors behave and interact with your ads. This insight will provide you with a way to understand your site visitors better and tailor fit your future campaigns to match their interests. For this tutorial, we'll show you what code to insert and where. Are you ready? Let's get started. Let's kick off our lesson with a quick overview of how click tracking in DFP works. When you create a click tracker with your creative and the ad is served, DFP will send a request from the page when the user clicks the creative. This contrasts with creatives that do not have click trackers embedded, in which case a click will be counted only when the URL redirects to the target page. As you can see, embedding click trackers into your creative enables DFP to count clicks, even if the creative does not redirect to a target URL. Please take note, if you are serving non-DFP hosted creatives, then you will need to embed click macros. You can learn more about click macros in our Learn to Monetize More lesson, 5 Ways to Use Click Macros in DFP. The first matter, of course, is creating an ad unit that will be dedicated as your text link. Because the text link line items are entirely served by you, and not DFP, the ad unit you create now will only be used as a way to streamline reporting. Because this ad unit will be crucial for reporting purposes, we recommend you name it in a way that makes it easily distinguishable from other ad units in your reports. The naming convention that the Learn to Monetize More team prefers to use is website underscore tracking. Now, there's a possibility that you are a publisher that uses various types of text links. For example, flash click-throughs or click-throughs hard-coded on your site, in which case you may choose to create a specific ad unit for each of those approaches. Next, set the size of your ad unit. We recommend you set the size as 1 by 1. Now that you've created and named an ad unit sized as 1 by 1, you can proceed to creating your text link. First, go to Inventory. Navigate to the Settings section and under the drop-down menu for Type, select Click Tracking Only. Now it's time to enter the various details for your click tracker, including the Dates, Limit and Cost. Dates and Cost are self-explanatory, but what does the limit represent? The limit is the maximum number of clicks DFP should track. Any subsequent click above the limit is not counted, however, they will still redirect to the destination URL. With your ad unit and click tracker created, it's time to target the ad unit to specifically report on this line item. A quick note about targeting is worth a mention here. Because DFP will not be serving this text link line item, it cannot be targeted to a specific audience. Finally, you can click Save and Upload Creatives. You will input the desired destination URL for the text link on the creative page. Decide on a name for the creative and enter it here. Monetize More often uses the same name as the text link for our creative. After entering a name for the creative, it's time to enter the destination URL. Whatever destination URL you enter here at this stage will be automatically inserted into the ad tag. An important note here worth mentioning due to a possible disruption to the campaign. If you decide to pause a click tracking line item, or if it's before or after the creative run dates, DFP will not insert the destination URL into the ad tag automatically, and the line item will stop running. So, please be aware. With the details in place, it's time to click Save. We've reached the final stage of the click tracking creation process, and we're just about ready to generate click tracking URLs to implement on our site. Let's move forward and open the click tracking line item. From the drop down, locate Generate Click Tracking Link. Select an ad unit, highlight and copy the link, and finally, implement the link on the site or send it to the webmaster. And that's all there is to it! We hope this lesson has demystified how to use click tracking in DFP. Now, start tracking those clicks! That concludes our video for today. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get updates on our latest videos. See you next time!